So if you'll recall, back in May, we talked about an internal poll from Nina Turner's campaign, and it showed that she had a 35-point lead over her closest opponent. She had over 50% of the vote. But I cautioned everyone back then, if you'll remember this, um, I said, look, just because things are looking good now doesn't mean that things won't change. Because the establishment, the Democratic Party, they're seeing the same poll that we're all seeing. So all this is going to do is catalyze an all-out war against Nina Turner. And that's exactly what happened. Lobbyists came out in droves to try to stop Nina Turner. Hillary Clinton, Jim Clyburn all came out to stop Nina Turner. And guess what? The establishment's war on Nina Turner is working. It is very successful because now a new internal poll from her opponent shows that her lead has shrunk drastically. And now is the time to panic, folks. So as Ali Mutnick of Politico explains, Nina Turner opened an early lead in this summer's hotly contested Ohio special election, but the progressive heavyweight might not be running away with it. A new internal poll by her top competitor, Cuyahoga County Democratic Chair Chantel Brown, suggests the Democratic Party race has tightened. In the survey conducted in early July, Turner led with 43%, followed by Brown with 36%. That seven-point gap is a much closer spread than earlier polling from both candidates. An April survey from Brown's campaign found her trailing Turner by 32 points, 42% to 10%, and Turner's late May poll showed her with 50% of the vote up 35 points over Brown, but now she is seven points behind Nina Turner. That is a huge swing. So if she made up that much of a gap, she can easily surpass Nina Turner given a few more weeks, within a few more weeks. So it is panic time. And if you were previously sitting out this race because it's Nina Turner and she's a political behemoth, she has more money and name recognition... Now is the time to not take this race for granted. Now is the time to get involved. Donate anything if you can, even a buck or two. Support Nina Turner on the ground. Phone bank. Everything that you can possibly do to help Nina Turner, now is the time to do it. Because I'm telling you, folks, the Democratic Party establishment isn't just going to allow her to walk to victory. I knew that when that gigantic lead was released, that was the beginning of the end of her status of just basically coasting. And it's not like she wasn't already fighting hard for this, but it's no longer going to be an easy fight. Now it's going to be a really difficult battle to try to overcome the entire Democratic Party and corporate establishment. Now, to show you what Nina Turner is up against, outright lies. So this race, uh, you know, Nina Turner has basically been running on Medicare for All because it's very popular in this uh, heavy Democratic Party-leaning district. So what are they doing now to counter that since her opponent doesn't support Medicare for All? They're just lying about Nina Turner's position and they're implying that she doesn't actually support Medicare for All. So Ryan Grimm shared this mailer that was sent out by DMFI, which is Democratic Majority for Israel PAC, and it's a mailer that tries to suggest that Nina Turner is against raising the minimum wage and universal health care. And also she's against immigration reform as well. And you can see all of this right here. They're basically explicitly saying Nina Turner doesn't support raising the minimum wage. How awful is that? Nina Turner doesn't even support immigration reform. How awful is that? Priorities that you care about the most. Now, to say that Nina Turner doesn't support universal health care or immigration reform or raising the minimum wage, it sounds wrong because it's a lie. Now, the reason why they're saying that she's against these things is because she voted against the 2020 Democratic Party DNC platform. Now, ask yourself, why would Nina Turner vote against this platform? Well, it's specifically because it didn't contain the things that she wants. Medicare for all. But rather than pointing that out, they're saying, well, you know what? She actually doesn't support universal health care, even though Chantel Brown literally is against Medicare for all. Well, Nina Turner is the one who's actually against Medicare for All, and Washington Post reporter Dave Wagle breaks it down, saying the letter claims that not supporting the 2020 DNC platform means you oppose universal health care. That's wildly dishonest. Sanders delegates, including Ro Khanna and Rashida Tlaib, opposed the platform explicitly because it did not contain Medicare for All. Now, he adds, not every Sanders delegate voted no. There was an understanding that this was a protest vote of a platform that was not going to pass anyway. And basically, what they're trying to do is equate her with Donald Trump. Well, you see, Nina Turner said that voting for Joe Biden is like eating half a bowl of shit. 
rather than a whole bowl of shit with Donald Trump. So, you know, that's bad. She's really divisive. Americans came together to elect Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. So why is Nina Turner trying to be like Trump and divide Americans further? So they're trying to make it seem like she's Trumpian when ironically, they're the ones who are being more Trumpian by explicitly lying about her positions. Nina Turner has been very consistent about her support for Medicare for All. It's been one of her main issues that she's running on in this race. But what do they do to counter that? Rather than just adopting Medicare for All themselves, they just lie and say, actually, Nina Turner doesn't support Medicare for All. And it's not just that the Democratic Party establishment is now coming out against Nina Turner. Now the media is predictably joining the Democratic Party's smear campaign against Nina Turner. So the Daily Beast's Roger Solenberger writes, Democratic star Nina Turner blows pledge not to take lobbyist money. Flip-flop. Bernie Sanders' 2020 national co-chair Nina Turner said she wouldn't take lobbyist donations. Guess what happened next? And he writes, according to Federal Election Commission records, however, the Nina Turner campaign reported a March 31st donation of $1,000 from the director of Amer Public Affairs, a Firm Turner founded last September as an offshoot of D.C.-based lobbying shop Mercury Public Affairs. And on January 19th, three days after her tweet, Turner accepted $250 from a partner at Mercury per FEC filings. Okay, so they're very clearly scraping the bottom of the barrel here, but let's just accept the author's argument here. And let's, let's agree, Nina Turner is a flip-flopper. She took two problematic donations, one from a firm that she founded and another from a firm from an individual at a firm that she's associated with. So that's $1250 that are bad that Nina Turner should probably return. And not to mention that $250 that she took, I mean I've probably given more to Nina Turner myself. Uh, I'd have to check, but Basically, I signed up to donate $27 per month to Nina Turner. I've also bought merch and given her, you know, $10 here, $15 there. So, I mean, it's funny, like you can you can see how desperate they are, but let's just accept that Nina Turner flip-flopped on this position if we're being extra charitable to this author who's definitely not trying to smear Nina Turner. Okay, so Nina Turner flip-flopped on this issue here. She's still the better candidate, hands down by a mile and a half, because guess what? Her opponent not only openly accepts corporate PAC money and lobbyist money and a lot more than the amount that Nina Turner received, but she also publicly solicited donations from pro-Israel super PACs, and on top of that, she placed quotes on her website to show how pro-Israel she is, so that way this well-funded lobby would jump in the race and support her, and guess what? She did get them on board, because now they're smearing Nina Turner. That DMFI uh, mailer was sent out by the Democratic Majority for Israel, and I don't think it's a coincidence that she put a quote from the DMFI president on her website, basically saying, hey, come and support me, I'm pro-Israel, I'd love to have some of your support in this race and some of your money in this race. So it's disingenuous. It, it, anything that Nina Turner has previously done, any little misstep that she makes, even if we can say, all right, by, by her standards, perhaps this is something that's problematic. Perhaps Nina Turner should return those donations, even though they're from individuals, they're still technically, you know, their occupation is lobbyists. So perhaps she should return these donations. Even if we accept the worst that they believe about Nina Turner, she's still the best candidate in this race and would unquestionably uh, unquestionably be one of the best fighters in this country for the policies that they claim that she doesn't support. So it's so desperate and you see their desperation. But guess what? It's finally paying off for them. And look, if you've been sitting out, now is the time to get involved. Because here's the deal, folks. It's going to be Nina Turner or Chantel Brown. A progressive or a corporate Democrat who doesn't support Medicare for All, who shamelessly tries to solicit donations from the pro-Israel lobby while they were doing a bombing campaign in Gaza, executing civilians, children. So you have to ask yourself, do you want Nina Turner to take that seat and actually fight for progressive policies? Or do you want a corporate Democrat to take that seat? I think this is a very clear solution if you're a leftist and any leftist who isn't getting involved to help Nina Turner here I don't know what you're doing. So, I mean, we have to absolutely go to bat for Nina Turner now because her success here is in jeopardy. And her lead has basically disappeared. And at the rate that it is shrinking, it may be gone come election day. So now is the time that we get involved. Don't kick yourself later. Get involved now and fight for Nina Turner if you want her to fight for you. It's that simple. This is easy to me.